answers. Are you a family caregiver? Are you caregiving for someone who can no longer take care of themselves? Are you overwhelmed? This is Caregiver Solutions Info with Marsha Teal. Marsha will be hosting an hour of true stories and information, tips and updates of the latest research and necessary information in the caregiving field, focusing on you, the family caregiver. An Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert, Marsha has 15 years of hands-on experience at Arden Courts, a leader in assisted living dementia communities here in the U.S. Marsha covers everything you need to know as a family caregiver, especially if you care for a loved one with Alzheimer's disease or other related dementia or chronic illness. If you have a friend or relative that is also a family caregiver, call them now. They won't want to miss a minute. And let them know they can watch on caregiversolutions.info. And they can listen on WNN 1470 AM in South Florida or nationally on the iHeartRadio app. Now, sit back, relax, and learn from our host, Marsha Teal, as she brings information to you that may just be the caregiving solution you need. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Caregiver Solution Info Show. I'm happy you could join us today. We have another wonderful program for you. Uh, if you're new to this show, it is an educational platform for family caregivers, people that are taking care of loved ones or other people that can't take care of themselves because they have some form of memory loss whether it's Alzheimer's disease or dementia from some other reason like Parkinson's or vascular dementia. So this is our seventh year and we've been educating families all across uh, the United States and the world uh, on this topic. So anything related to caregiving and anything related to dementia, we talk about it on the show. We have experts who come on and share their experiences, their expertise, give lots of great advice so that you as a family caregiver can learn because it's a very difficult uh, job that you're doing and you, you, most times people aren't prepared for doing that particular job. So the more education that you receive, the more that you reach out and connect with people, the better that your journey is going to be and it's going to be something that you will feel more comfortable with um, as you go along. So I'm glad that you're here today. Uh, we're going to be giving away a free book at uh, 5.30, at, uh, at 6.30, sorry, at the half hour. So you want to be prepared to uh, take down that information. But today, we have a very, very experienced uh, licensed clinical social worker. I know her for many, many years. Her name is Donna True, and she's joining us from her location up in Stewart, Florida today. Donna is the Program Development and Outreach Coordinator for the Council on Aging of Martin County at the Kane Center, which is located in Stewart, Florida. It's a private nonprofit organization. Donna has uh, 27 years total experience working with families dealing with dementia and all the challenges and issues that go with it and helping them uh, and spending 17 years of that time with the Alzheimer's Association. So I'm very happy and proud to have Donna True with us today on the program. Hi Donna, welcome to the show. Hello, it is so wonderful to see you Marsha. It's been a long time, and over the years, you and I have heard many, many fabulous speakers. We've learned so much from not only the families, from the speakers that we've listened to. So I am absolutely honored and delighted to be here today. Thank you. Well, thank you, because I'm honored that you're here to uh, share your experience, because you've been doing this uh, uh, even longer than I have, and we all have learned from you over the years, too. So... You're there um, at the Kane Center with the uh, Council on Aging of Martin County. What is your role there in particular when it relates to caregivers? Well, my position, my title is actually Program Development and Outreach Coordinator. And a big part of what I do is the Martin County Hugs Program, which is all about making Martin County dementia friendly by training family members first responders, um, any business that you can think of, we want to train them. So a huge part of what I do is education, 
but I also, every single day, I get phone calls or emails from people, some whose uh, loved ones are just newly diagnosed, some whose loved ones absolutely won't go to get evaluated. Um, and they're just at all different stages and all different times in their lives. And so I work with all the families, whether it's one-on-one -on, -one on the phone or whether if they're local and they can come in person or whether it's through one of our support groups it's but it's every single day somebody new calls for help and caregiving unfortunately that's a fact because i say every day there's you know new caregivers born um, all the time because there is no cure for alzheimer's disease um, they still don't know what causes it they're still trying um, so unfortunately we still have the disease, we still have caregivers, um, and we still have a big need to educate because we have young, I call young caregivers or new caregivers, and that we also have caregivers been doing this a very long time. And we're going to talk about that today and maybe what the needs and how they're different with someone who's a, a new caregiver versus someone who's been doing it a long time. But I want to go back to what you just said about dementia friendly community now there has been talk i've seen it on the internet um, where the, certain cities are trying to become dementia friendly cities right and so you mentioned that you're educating uh different people in the community but how how does this come together how does how does a a, a city like stewart become dementia friendly how do you do that um, this whole program with us, with Martin County Hugs, started in 2017 or 2018, where two agencies actually came together. One that you know very well, which is Alzheimer's Community Care. And we partnered together in this effort to get education and awareness out to all of our, our entire county, which... We, were, we are working on that. I'm the educator. So COVID has slowed us down a little bit because we were doing in-person trainings and on a regular basis. But we're reaching out to different people. We have already trained our sheriff's office, our Stewart Police Department, Martin County Fire Rescue. Um, so we have trained them. We've trained bankers and real estate companies and um, financial investment companies, all different kinds of businesses. So they know what to do. They know the warning signs. If they have a client, if they're a banker and they have a client who's coming in every day to check their balance or they call every single day to check on things, we can help them determine, okay, what's the next step? Is there something going on here medically? Why is this happening? So why are you educating like the police? How would them being educated on dementia help in the community? Oh, this is a, because they are first responders. And a lot of times, as you know, um, people, if, if the family caregivers aren't trained about the new world, and how to enter the world of their loved one with a memory loss disorder, sometimes things can escalate. Now, I don't know about you, but I have rarely, in t almost 27 years, I have rarely seen violence. That to me is a stereotype that is not true. But when a caregiver is trained how to respond differently so the person doesn't get frustrated or aggravated, you know, it, it has a better outcome. If they do get very frustrated and aggravated, sometimes the police are the first ones who are called to help calm that person down. Um, we can have people that are driving. We have a lot of people who, who have Alzheimer's disease that are still driving. Your license is not automatically revoked with that diagnosis. So if they get pulled over and they can't pull out their driver's license or something, they're not able to follow directions. Are the police going to assume they're on drugs or they're drinking or Perhaps they have a little card that says, I have Alzheimer's disease or, the, you know, something like that. They might be wearing some type of an identification bracelet and we might need to help them, help the families get that person off the road. But the police are often involved and I'm sure you've seen it, you know, numerous times 
with families where they get called in and same as first responders because safety is a big issue. Right. So by educating the first responders, especially the police, like you said, sometimes they are called because people do get aggressive sometimes and caregivers can get scared and, and somebody might call the police. And instead of just, like you said, assuming they're just belligerent and hauling them off to jail, they can assess the situation and at least be aware that this might be an, a, a dementia diagnosis situation going on here because before everybody was educated and still now when they're not educated that's what has happened they have been taken to jail and put in a cell and the person with dementia doesn't really understand what's going on and it just gets them more upset and things just you know escalate and and snowball from that so it's a really really good um uh, you no know, program that you all are doing there and even um, restaurants um, are important right because uh, talk a little bit about when a person a caregiver takes their uh, loved one with Alzheimer's into a restaurant what can go wrong and how can they maybe handle that or how would it benefit the wait staff to know that sometimes people come in that have memory loss and how would they handle things differently? Oh, I have so many good examples of that. And for example, somebody with short term memory loss, which is what we're talking about with any kind of dementia, may ask the same question over and over again. So a server comes up and they've asked them 10 times in the past minute, what's your name? And the server, it's busy, it's hectic, we're in a tourist area, and they can get a little impatient. Well, Marsha, over the years, I'm sure you've seen many of what I call the dignity card, where the caregiver, they've taught me how they subtly hold it up to the menu so that the server sees this little card that says, my companion has dementia, please be patient, something along those lines. So once, and they're, oh, then the light comes on and they treat that person differently. They may not be able to make decisions in terms of the menu. When you look at the menus these days, they're very complicated and it's too hard. So we want to teach people how to treat everybody with dignity and respect. And the people with dementia are not wearing a D on their forehead for dementia. They're, it's not as if they have a look, especially in the early stage or with younger onset and I wanted to see if I can hold up my our handbook that we created I don't know if you can see the face the title is dementia has many faces and this young woman this beautiful young woman who's an artist was our cover girl um, was only in her 60s or she was in her late 50s when she was diagnosed diagnosed if you were at a restaurant with her you would not in a million years think she has Alzheimer's disease. She was actually diagnosed with Alzheimer's and she's a local Martin County person. Our whole handbook has all real people from Martin County that are going through this with their caregivers and it's one way we had of connecting the community so they know these people are real and that Alzheimer's or other types of dementia can happen much younger than we expect. It's not people in their 80s and 90s only. It might be people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. So we have to create a lot of awareness so everybody's treated better. And again, with dignity and respect, that's the key. That's so wonderful because people do assume a lot of times that Alzheimer's is an old person's disease, and it's not necessarily so. I mean, 50% of people over the age of 85, you know, have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, but you're right, people can be diagnosed in their 40s, 50s, 60s. So a uh, big, big campaign you have going on there. And I'm so glad that you are there to, to do that for the county. Um, it's very much needed, and I'm glad to hear that. But you also do a lot of other types of educating. And I know that there at the Kane Center, you've been working diligently on a program coming up, which is actually tomorrow. Um, and I know that people have signed up and they're going to be there in person, but 
we know that people can still get in on this virtually. So tell us a little bit about what's happening tomorrow, what the program is all about, and how people could join into that program. Okay, I would love to tell you. Um, first of all, at the Kane Center, our, we have a beautiful building and we have a very big auditorium that can hold, I don't know, it's two or three hundred people. So it's very big, but we have limited our in-person attendance so that we can be socially distanced and safe to, it's about 60 people, a little more people, a little more than that. So because so many people were signing up for an event that I'm going to tell you about, we added a virtual component so people can actually still sign up for virtual. We are at full capacity for in-person, but tomorrow from one to three, we're going to have two really well-known doctors speaking to us. One is actually going to talk about Parkinson's and he, um, Dr. Arif Dalvi, he, you might've seen him on TV recently because they've interviewed him for certain things. And he runs the memory disorder center as well as, um, he's at Palm Beach Neuroscience Institute. So he's going to be speaking, but he's going to gear his talk towards Parkinson's disease. And with Parkinson's, you sometimes do see dementia accompanying that. And then for the second half of our webinar, we're going to have Dr. Patel, who she is a neurologist. She used to be at the Memory Disorder Center in West Palm Beach, but she is now with Brain Matters Research. And she's going to be talking about the Alzheimer's component. So we're really excited about that. And we do have plenty of space for people to join us virtually. Right now, I think we have 70 or 80 virtual RSVPs, but I think we can go up to like a thousand. So everybody's oh, welcome that's to join us. Yes. And I could actually put, if there's a chat box, I could put, if somebody wants to sign up and join us tomorrow from wherever they are, that's the one good thing about the virtual component. It doesn't matter where you are. You can be in California, New York, another country, Florida. You can join and get the education. But you would have to send us an email as soon as possible so that our staff tomorrow can send the webinar invite out because it does start at uh, one o'clock. So I know I'll be running around getting things set up and, and doing everything. But if you want that, I can, is there a chat yes. box on? on no, we, we, unfortunately we don't have the chat box, but just go ahead and give that um, email address that someone would need to send in, letting them know that they'd like to get the link to join the virtual conference tomorrow from one to three. Um, and what is that email address? Okay, the email address, I'll say that the whole thing first, hrosado at canecenter.org, but let me spell it out for you. H for Helena, R, O, S like Sam, A like Apple, T like Thomas, O like... Uh, Orange. Awesome. <laughs> Orange. Okay. Yes, thank you. Orange. Um, so that's H Rosado at... Kane Center, and Kane is spelled with a K, K-A, and like Nancy, E like elephant, center, C like Charlie, E, and like Nancy, T like Thomas, E, R, dot, org, O-R-G, hrosado okay. at kanecenter.org. Okay, thank you. you so someone's... Yeah, if somebody gets stuck, they can call. If they didn't get it, they can just call the main number, and I'm happy to give that. Do you want that number as well? Sure, please. Yes, please. Okay. It's area code 772-223-7800. All right, 772-223-7800. That's the Kane Center, Stewart, Florida. If you want to join in on this virtual conference learning uh, more about Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease. Um, it's called Advances in Medicine and they'll be talking about these two particular diseases by uh, very well-known uh, prominent physicians um, and it will be fantastic. I just, I just know it will be fantastic and so thank you for setting that up. That's really, really important. Um, 
so when you mentioned the, the Kane Center, and there's a lot going on there, you have these seminars and webinars, but do you also have support groups there? <gasps> yes. We used to meet in person before COVID, and what we have is two different support groups. One in the morning is geared towards spouses. We meet twice a month. We do meet, but it's on Zoom now, so we are not meeting in person to make sure everybody's safe. So the second group is geared towards adult children, and people have joined us from Chicago and New Hampshire and all places from all over. A lot of them have a parent living here in Stewart area, but they're not here and they want the information. Um, so we have the two support groups that people could contact. They can just call the Kane Center at that number we just talked about and, and ask for me, Donna True. We have, I always tell people, we have two Donnas at the Kane Center, but I shouldn't say this because it's on on the internet, but I'm the only true one. <laughs> well, I was gonna, uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. There's only one true Donna, and that is you. Yes. Well, that's, yes, that's wonderful. Last name. Yes, T-R-U-E. Very so speaking of um, COVID and having to social distance and now with this new variant going on, in your opinion, how has all of this pandemic affected caregivers? Um, you know, you hear it all the time, you know, you're, you're speaking to caregivers every single day. Um, I, I, it obviously is stressful, but how do you think in general it's affected the caregiving efforts of, of families? I think, Marsha, that it's had a, a, a big effect on families because they're, they fear uh, somebody, especially if their loved one is older, they fear people coming into the home. They fear people going to daycare. They fear so many different things. They're afraid that they're going to get sick. Um, so their worlds have gotten smaller. But on the other hand, with the virtual, all the virtual education, I mean, there's so much available out there now. It is incredible. People get help, like through this, the show that you're doing. It's amazing. They can get help anytime. They can get it online. They don't have, they can stay in their pajamas all day if they wanted to. Um, they can get the help. But the worlds have become smaller. And we've adjusted at the Kane Center in a couple different ways. We have a day, we call it the club. That's our daycare center, but we call it the club. And we've actually been open, our, our agency's been open over 45 years. We have been around for a long time. And we did all kinds of things besides disinfecting everything. We have some acrylic dividers at our tables and we separate people out so they're in smaller groups. Um, we do a lot of things like that to just do whatever we can to enhance the safety of any attendees that come in. And we actually, we did shut down for a few months during the height of COVID, but we also provided some in-home help. So we came up with some new programs that would help people and we're just trying to go with the flow as best as we can and help family members. And again, they can pick up the phone and call and talk and it, it works out that way, but it's very different. Yeah. Sometimes caregivers just need a voice to vent to. Sometimes their loved one who has dementia needs to be with other people that they can connect to because they still need that socialization aspect. And, um, you know, it, it's a, a really good service that you provide with the day center. And I'm so glad that you're still able to do that, even with the COVID and being safe and keeping everybody connected. And, and that's a wonderful thing that you guys do. So uh, I hope that people will take advantage of the support groups because they are on Zoom. You don't have to be in Martin County. You can be anywhere in the world. Join the support groups. It's, it's important to get that information. And um, we always say, you know, get into a support group. Uh, it might not be something that you ever thought you would do, but you, it's just information. And when you're in a support group, you don't necessarily have to share and tell what's going on, right? Donna, you can learn from others who are talking. A lot of people are a little bit shy about support groups thinking that they have to share their story and, and maybe they don't want to. So 
that works both ways, right? They absolutely have that option to just be a listener if they want to and pick up from other things. But the tips that are shared are amazing. Uh, just one quick example. Well, first of all, um, our support group for the spouses lately has been a majority of men, which is unusual because most of the time in person we seem to have got always had more women, but we have a majority of men right now. But one of the, the adult children caregiver support group, one of the gentlemen said he was a caregiver for his mom and he's, he himself is a nurse. And he said, something's going on with the toilet paper at home. She is using so much toilet paper and she's clogging the toilet up all the time. So of course, we all know that some of these issues can happen, but one of the other care, caregivers said, oh, my dad was doing the same thing and guess what worked? I just gave him a little tiny little bit of toilet paper left on the roll and removed all the extra paper towels, all the extra rolls of toilet tissue from the bathroom and he had just a little bit. He could never do that again. Well, guess what? In the next meeting, two weeks later, we meet twice a month, the gentleman said that worked for his mom. So it's little tips like that. Um, Last week, we had a gentleman, he's visiting his mom. His mom's in Port St. Lucie. She has younger onset Alzheimer's, which it started before age 65. But he was talking about safety because he had taken her out. And guess what, Marcia, I'm sure you can picture this. He had her run to the men's room. When he came out, a minute or two later, Ma, yes. Gone. Gone. Mom, gone. So we talked about safety things for at home. One of the girls ran. She left her Zoom camera and she came back and she was holding up a doorknob thing, a plastic doorknob thing that they, it makes it, it's like a childproof doorknob and also something that wedges under the door that sounds a shrill alarm if somebody's trying to get out from home. But we also told the gentleman, make sure you have a good picture. And it might even be every day you go out, take a good picture so that you can show the police or whoever it is exactly what that person looks like today is building that safety net around people and he was so happy and we were all like how did you just happen to have those props like for show and tell but she has them in her home for her dad and and it really worked out it was very helpful to him he was blown away he's like wow so and i think that's important to know because support groups aren't about just you know sharing the bad things and and complaining about the caregiving problems it's about getting the good tips and the information things that are really going to help people so thank you for sharing that donna we're going to take a quick break and when we come back we're going to have more information this is great with donna true and so you won't want to miss that so stay tuned we'll be right back Arden Courts is not just a place to live. It's a place to call home. Residential living combined with quality caregiving. This is the philosophy behind Arden Courts. Communities created exclusively for individuals with Alzheimer's disease and related dementia who would benefit from a safe and structured environment. For additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides, call 888 478 2410 to locate a community nearest you. Inquire about our educational seminars, resource library, or support groups, or simply feel free to ask questions you may have about Alzheimer's and related dementias. At Arden Courts, we know, we understand, and we can help because memory care is all we do. Remember, call 888 478 2410 for additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides. You are listening to your host, Marsha Teal, an Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert on caregiversolutions.info. If you have a question or wish to share a story, call into the show at 888-565-1470 and talk with Marsha. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. Welcome back. At this time, I'd like to thank our national sponsor, Arden Courts Memory Care Community, for bringing this program to you. Arden Courts is a leader in the field of memory care. They have about 50 memory care assisted living communities throughout the United States. And they are an expert when it comes to helping families 
uh, handle all kinds of dementia and they are there for you the caregiver as well as for your family member and today because you're listening or watching the show they'd like to give you this free book the 36 hour day written by Dr. Peter Ravens and Nancy Mays it's a wonderful resource for caregivers absolutely free all you have to do is send an email to Arden Courts. That email address is Delray, D E L R A Y, at Arden Courts.com. Give them your name, address, telephone number. Tell them that you heard about the free offer for the 36 hour day book on the Caregiver Solutions Info Show, and they'll be happy to mail that book straight to you. So if you don't have this, I highly recommend it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we're back with Donna True, my guest today. Donna is a licensed clinical social worker. <laughs> Thank you. And she is uh, with the Council on Aging of Martin County at the Kane Center in Stewart, Florida. And Donna has been talking about uh, caregiving, helping caregivers, uh, educating, uh, a lot going on there um, at the uh, Kane Center through the Martin County Council of Aging. So, Donna, we were talking about support groups. So this, uh, this next question is a, is a segue to that because I was going to ask you, in, in your opinion, what would you first say to a new caregiver, someone who has just become a caregiver, they found out their mother, their spouse, their father, their grandparent has just been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, what, what do they do next? Marsha. You know, I feel like you were in my email this morning because I had that exact email this morning from a gentleman who said his mom was just diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and he wants, to, and she's not showing interest in activities that she used to have and he wanted to know what to do. He didn't, he said he wasn't very educated about Alzheimer's and so, I mean, that came up today. And I just really, even though I'm trying to get everything done for tomorrow's event, that took me some time to really come up with a, a good email response to him. First of all, there's help and there's hope. And there's help available around the clock. There is truly help available around the clock. Education is a very big component when you have a loved one with memory loss disorder. And what I was explaining to him in the email was, first of all, the two, two of the basic rules that we've heard for so long is enter their world and do not argue. So if I said to you, oh, Marsha, I like your yellow top, I know exactly what you would say. You would not correct me and say, Donna, it's not yellow. What's the matter with you? You know, we learned this years ago. This is not yellow. You would say, thank you. I love the color yellow, right? I, I know you would do right. that. You know this stuff too well. That's so right. You, you go with the flow. You wouldn't argue with me. You wouldn't correct me. And there's some things where you just, it doesn't really matter. And I remember years ago, you had quite, you had a lecture series at Arden Courts. And one of the ladies there was talking about one of the questions from the audience was their husband wouldn't, he would sleep in the recliner and he wouldn't put his pajamas on at night. And your speaker said, there's no pajama police in Florida. I don't think it's really going to matter. This was a long time. This might have even been before you started at Arden Courts. But, um, so that goes way back. So we have to learn the new rules of this world. We have to learn what it means to have short-term memory loss. And to me, a huge part of that is for the caregiver to learn how to adjust their expectations. Because even though you just told somebody, the um, authors of that book, The 36-Hour Day, you just said it, Mason Rabins. If somebody just said, if you repeat it again, say, well, you never told me that. We have to learn a new set of rules. We have to learn as a caregiver. We have to learn a new set of responses because their brain is changing and it's not their fault. So we have to get educated on how to cope how to keep ourselves healthy as caregivers, that's crucial. And it's a lot easier said than done. We all know that, but because there's so much help out there. So I, I told that person, let's talk about it because safety is another huge issue. 
if somebody's in an early stage, they could still be driving, and that could be a big safety issue. I'd want to see them get a picture of the car, the tag, on the license plate on the car, make sure they know exactly how many dents are in there because something can happen in the car and the, the driver with a memory loss disorder doesn't remember how they happened or that they were fresh. Um, but I told him, let's talk more about it because if his mom's cooking at home, um, she might forget about something on the stove. That's a safety issue. And there's so much education out there that we can help with. If I can learn more about his individual situation, if she needs socialization and somebody can come to the house and provide that, or she can find a daycare center. And I know there's lots of lists of the daycare centers that are available in all of our counties, whether it's Martin County, Palm Beach County, St. Lucie County, Broward, we have numerous choices and we want people to know about them and to take advantage of that. Yeah, there is so much that a new caregiver needs to be aware of. And I love it when we say, you know, we have to get in their world because they really can't function anymore in our world. And you might know them very, very well and you have one way of dealing with them or communicating with them and you know who how they are but dementia changes all of that and so they like you said they can't help it it's not their fault so we have to we as the caregivers we are the ones that have to be educated and learn how to change and that's probably one of the hardest thing especially for older spouses when they've been married for 50, 60 years and they have a certain way of, you know, handling situations or communicating with their spouse and all of a sudden things are just topsy-turvy and they don't know what to do and they get very frustrated, they get confused and they even get angry. You know, I told you already, don't you listen, don't you understand, why don't you remember? I mean, we see this all the time and it's because they expect their loved one with now the new diagnosis of dementia to be the way they always were. And it's, it's a whole new ball game now, you know? And I think that's the hardest thing for, for caregivers to really grasp is that they're the ones that have to, to change and change their attitude, change their reaction, um, get educated about all of it because once they do, um, all of a sudden, like you said, the light bulb will go off and they go, oh, okay, I, I just agreed with her because it didn't really matter whether the clouds were orange or whether they were white. I just said, yeah, those are pretty orange clouds, right? So it doesn't, if it doesn't matter, why create a problem, right? Why argue? So, um, so that's really, really good information. And um, the, the man in your email today, and I did not know that you got that email today, so you know that was just uh, by chance, but I know that people are always emailing you with questions and, and how do I do this and how do I do that. So I know that you gave him a lot of good advice uh, and you know, keep coming back, whoever you are, keep coming back and, and learning. But let's talk about the flip side Let's talk about a caregiver who's been a caregiver for a very long time. Maybe, you know, could be seven, ten years even. Because, you know, Alzheimer's disease can, you know, go anywhere from, you know, uh, two to twenty years. I mean, you just don't know that you could be a caregiver in, in, in that time frame. So are the needs different and how are they different with a caregiver who's been doing it a long time because obviously they've been in the trenches and they've been learning and they've been adapting and adjusting but what are their needs going forward if, if being that they've been doing it so long um if you have a caregiver who's been caregiving for going on 20 years they're also 20 years older and to think about what life is like if you're 80 years old 85 years old, 90 years old, taking care of a spouse with dementia, and that spouse might be a lot better physically. They might be able to run out the door and or go for a walk or whatever, and are you able to follow them? There's times when people 
have to reach out to get a little bit of help. Um, it's, it, it, I think it is different. What I really hope for is that people that have been caregiving that long have reached a level of acceptance of who that person is, and, but they're also tired a lot of times and they're not taking good care of themselves. And sometimes respite is needed and there's different ways to get respite, whether it's having somebody come into the home or having somebody go, I don't know if Arden Courts is doing the short term right now, but we're having somebody move to assisted living facility or community where, um, you know, Marsha, there's something that I, this was going back when I first moved up to Martin County. It was almost, it was over t about 20 years ago. But one of the caregivers, his wife had younger onset Alzheimer's in her 60s. And he eventually, it got too much. He was about to have another heart attack because it was getting stressful because she battled him at every moment if he had to bathe her because she you know, had an accident of uh, incontinence, bout or whatever, she would, he would struggle with her. But he finally had to make the decision to move her into a community. And I'll never forget his words. I haven't forgotten him to this day, said Donna, moving her into the community has given me time to love her. And their relationship totally changed from a ba everyday battle. You have to take a bath. I don't want to take a bath. I already took a bath. You know, that type of thing to let's, you know, a quality time when they go to visit in person and maybe go to an outing or do things like that. It totally changes it. Um, but when I think about acceptance, I also think about the grieving and caregiver. We grieve through every stage when people are first diagnosed, before they're diagnosed, every time there's a change. And we think about the five stages of grief that Kubler-Ross wrote about, and that's denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And you don't go through them in that way. They, you jump around through them. It's always a little bit different, but acceptance is incredible. And another thing I learned from it, caregivers are my best teachers. The family caregivers taught me more than anybody. And I remember one young woman, she basically gave up her career. She gave up everything to take care of her mom. And this does not always happen, but one day her mom did not recognize her. This, again, it may or may not happen. Everybody's absolutely different. But she said that first time it hurt. It really hurt her. But then after that, she started studying up on the disease. Like with the 36-hour day, that is a, we call that book the Bible. Um, but she learned about it. And then she got to the acceptance point. She goes, you know what? It doesn't matter who she thinks I am. I might not be her daughter. I might be her sister today. But I know who she is. She is my mom, and I love her. And to me... You know, her relationship with her mom was easier because she had reached that acceptance and she was willing, as you had mentioned earlier, to go with the flow. Absolutely. Well, that that's what we hope for all caregivers to get to that point because it, it is called the long goodbye for a reason, right? When you're dealing with Alzheimer's and it can last a long time and our loved one's memory is just fading, you know, further and further away and they're losing so much. So it is called the long goodbye for a good reason. Um, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more with Donna True from the Martin County Council of Aging. We'll be right back. Somewhere at the corner of bewildered and confused is a lost mother, a father, a sibling, a grandparent. Wandering is a common symptom of Alzheimer's or related dementias and can often make those who care for a loved one feel just as lost. If you're looking for a place that's safe and secure, look to Arden Courts. Memory care is all we do. We know. We understand. We can help. To learn more, visit Arden-Courts.com. Arden Courts follows equal housing opportunity guidelines. You are listening to your host, Marsha Teal, an Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert on caregiversolutions.info. If you have a question or wish to share a story, call into the show at 888-565-1470 and talk with Marsha. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. 
My wonderful guest today is Donna True. She's a licensed clinical social worker. She's the program development and outreach coordinator for the Council of Aging of Martin County at the Kane Center in Stewart, Florida. And uh, Donna is uh, wonderful. She has uh, over 27 years of experience helping caregivers understand uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, educate them and help them. And uh, thank you, Donna, for all that you do because you are such a blessing to so many people up there in Martin County. Um, we were talking before the break uh, just now, and it's interesting how you just happen to give an example and you segue right into the next thing I want to talk about. So you just uh, are very intuitive that way. Uh, but talking, let's talk a little bit in the few minutes we have left about what a caregiver should expect as the disease progresses. And it is a progressive disease. Uh, Alzheimer's disease uh, doesn't, doesn't stop. It, it is progressive, although it might be slow, it might be fast, it, it, it's always progressing. Uh, what are some of the things that caregivers should be aware of or be prepared for as the disease progresses and it's getting to the later stages? Okay, so in general we look at three stages, early, middle, and late. And um, with, I really want to emphasize there's almost always moments of joy. Almost always. And people with out memory without short-term memory they're living in the world here and now they're living in this present time and that's a gift to really concentrate on what's in front of you look at that bird look at that beautiful flower you create a new uh, way to find joy with them what makes them laugh what makes you laugh what makes you laugh together I have to emphasize that because there's so many moments of quality time and there's often moments of lucidity. It's not just a steady downhill decline. It's a bumpy. It's up and down. And there's good moments and there's bad moments. And there's moments when they are totally there. And you think, oh, they're fine. Um, but as people progress, if people really live into the, like, 20 years into the disease, um, people start as, let me put it this way, as children go forward through the stages of development, People with Alzheimer's or a related dementia go backwards through those stages of development. So you think about what can a 13-year-old do? A 13, they're fine by themselves. They can do all kinds of things. They're, they're not a problem. They can feed themselves, dress themselves, bathe themselves, groom themselves. Uh, and what are your expectations? Now, what about um, a 3-year-old? How many of you have to think of expectations? How many of you would take a 3-year-old to your local grocery store and sit them on the bench at the front of the store and say, I'll be right back. Don't move till I get back. You would never ever do that with a child and because your expectations are realistic. With somebody in an advanced stage of Alzheimer's, their perception of time could be very different. So even though you've gone just for a minute and they can barely walk, you say, oh, they're never going to walk anywhere. They're, they barely walk around guess what? They've gone missing in just a second. So people, again, go backwards through those stages. And if people live long enough, they might end up more like an infant. You know, it's hard to say. It's hard to realize that if people live that long. And I, I know it from my own aunt's experience, um, where they're basically, they need to be helped with be, um, bathing, feeding, grooming, all of those different things. They're very dependent. But the middle stage really lasts so long a lot of the times, and that's where you can really make a huge difference. Um, getting For the caregiver to get respite so you don't get burned out is very important. So your coping skills stay intact. So you have a little time for yourselves. Um, but every, the, you know, everybody's different. Too. And I, I'm sure you wanted to, to touch on something else, Marcia, regarding the different stages. Well, I, I just want to, you know, let people know to be prepared. I mean, that's really what it's about. Be educated and be prepared. Um, be realistic. And then realize what your capabilities are. How much can you really handle? 
know your breaking point, know when you as a caregiver is getting to the end of your rope, right? And take advantage of the respites. And, you know, they are out there. You can have someone come into your home. You can go to an assisted living and your loved one can be there for a week or so. Sometimes you can even do what they call trial stays at assisted livings and try it out for you know several weeks up to a month to see if it's something that's going to work. I know a lot of people are afraid of that, but they're afraid, but yet you, they really have to look at the consequences of becoming too stressed out, overwhelmed as a caregiver, uh, because the caregivers can collapse before the person they're taking care of from that stress. And I have unfortunately been to the bedside of too many caregivers that have gotten to the hospital because they have just been overwhelmed taking care of their loved one and uh, you have to be there for that person so just educate yourself of what's available the resources that are out there look into a memory care assisted living you know just in case it doesn't mean that you're going to maybe need it, but be prepared because if a crisis happens, and Donna, I know that you deal with these crises all the time, and if a crisis comes and happens, um, it will limit your choices of what what you can uh, do and what's offered to you. So you don't want to wait for a crisis to happen is, is the, the main um, statement here because uh, Anything could happen at any minute as you've been talking like, oh, my husband would never wander until he does, right? They, 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 oh, they never do. But what, six, is it like over 60% of people will wander away from home? And the caregiver says, oh, they would never do it, but yet they do. So be prepared, educate yourself. Um, and that's why we have wonderful licensed clinical social workers uh, at, at a lot of centers around the country. If you're not from Martin County, there are uh, wonderful people like Donna, not Donna, but like Donna. Nobody's actually like you, but, but they can help you um, through all of these uh, problems and questions and stages. So, you know, they everyone can uh, actually contact their um, Council of Aging wherever you might be um, and find your Donna somewhere and get the help that you need. So, Donna, if someone would like to contact you or contact the center for more information or to tap into the support groups or the educational seminars that you have, can you give that information one more time? Absolutely. Um, I'd like to give our website because we have some things on there, educational things on there. It's under the care, caregiving section. It's canecenter.org, K-A-N-E, center, C-E-N-T-E-R.org. And I'm happy to give out my direct line, which is area code 772-223-7888. And, you know, I'm thinking when you were just saying that, Marsha, I was thinking every caregiver has to have a note in their wallet saying, in case of emergency contact, such and such, or it needs to be on their phones under ICE for in case of emergency. But build that safety net around you as the caregiver so that you, you know, you don't fret and worry about what might happen if you are prepared, you are a step ahead. That's, that's right. I am so glad to have you today, Donna. Thank you for all you're doing, for your expertise, your great advice, your caring, your compassion. Love to see you here again. And uh, you take care and good luck with your webinar tomorrow. And if you all want to get in on that, call the Kane Center, 772-223-7800, and get the link to tap into that and anything else that you might need. But Donna, you're wonderful. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Marcia. And like I said before, we go back so many years, and I've seen you. You really, you are very passionate about all of this. I'm so glad you're helping caregivers all over. Well, 21 years doing it, so I'll maybe catch up to you one of these days. Um, I want to thank you all that were watching or listening with us today. Thank you for joining the Caregiver Solution Info Show every Tuesday, 6 to 7 p.m. Tune in to iHeartRadio. Tune in to caregiversolutions.info to watch it live. We'll be back next week with another wonderful program. Until then, take care, and we'll see you next time. Good night.
Thanks for joining us for this week's Caregiver Solutions with Marsha Teal. Join us next week as Marsha, who has 15 years of Alzheimer's disease and dementia care experience, brings you more needed information to help with the care of your loved one. This show can be seen again on caregiversolutions.info and questions can be left on the site, which may be used on the program to help others. See you next week for more.